this is how to do a trigger job on an M14 or M1A basically just uh, polish or crisping it up or how I did it obviously to do that you need to get the trigger group out of the rifle mine's a little sticky and I use this to remove it and it's the only tool you really need aside from this which I'll discuss later but it's a 332nd inch 2.5 millimeter roll pin punch and stick it in there and pry it back and down right out There's the trigger group. Let's get that out. Done with the rifle. Alright, first thing with disassembling this, you want to take the safety off and let the hammer forward. Otherwise, it is a pain in the butt to get back to there so you can disassemble it. First to take out is this uh, pin. And before you do any of this, um, make sure you have an extra half an hour or an hour because the first time I disassembled one of these, getting that pin in there and compressing that spring really sucks I mean it's difficult so if you're not feeling up to a challenge or mechanically inclined don't do this one and it's not really tight in there but you will have to go against the pressure of the spring so that pin that far and then relieve a little pressure pull it the rest of the way out there it is there's that and trigger itself there's the uh, hammer spring and its housing and everything that over here and then the hammer itself see safety back Oop forgot this pin and this pin and both of the pins punch out this way don't try and push them the other way because they are tapered there's that pin All right now the hammer rocks out and then the uh, safety it's held in right there so you just pull forward on it there's the safety and here's the safety spring. Now, you want to make sure that you keep that oriented that way because if you try to put it in, it looks like it'd fit that way, but that's not how it works. You have to put it in that way. So make sure you remember that. And then this, just rotate it over and out. And there's the uh, trigger. Our trigger group fully disassembled. This wrench is for basically just reassembly. It fits in here, kind of snug, but it happens to fit perfectly. And it also works on the back of here to push against that spring when you're reassembling. So you'll need something, preferably not bare metal, or you'll gouge up the surfaces. But that's all that's for. And the trigger job itself, here's what I polished. Get a close up here. go this surface this isn't really required to be polished I polished it anyway it's more for the reset after you fired but this surface down here is important that one you need to polish if you're gonna do a trigger job and you can see that I didn't go crazy with it there's still some imperfections left but I didn't want to remove too much metal what I did is I started with 600 grit and I removed a little bit of surface material, made it smoother and more even, and then I finished off the polishing with 1500 grit and soapy water. So there's the trigger, and then this, you can see, again, this isn't really required, but I went ahead and did it, same as the other one, 600 grit and then 1500. The important stuff on these are uh, these rounded edges here on the sides on both ends and here whoa easy but most importantly these back surfaces that are really hard to get to you might need to use a straight edge or a small piece of wood to get the sandpaper in there just right but those back surfaces and probably won't be able to see it but back here and those are 
the important ones to get on the hammer. And the rest of it I just went ahead and polished to smoothen out the whole action. That's how I did it, and it it was already a good trigger. I'd guess maybe five and a half pounds total, and it changed it probably I'd say three pounds, three and a half pounds max total, and it's much crisper and smoother. But all right, there's the trigger. There's what I polished and how I did it. And you can do it however you want, but that's what I use, and it seems to work. And obviously, you need to keep it well oiled. I do that with all of my components. On to reassembly. Take this, and just the exact opposite of how you took it apart. Kind of put that in there and rock that in sideways. And the safety. Make sure this spring goes in like that. Like I said, it goes on that little pin on the bottom there. And the safety itself. And this starts to get a little tricky. You have to compress that spring in order to get the safety in. And there's the safety pin. Just push it down, on into place. And there's that. Works. Make sure you leave the safety off. And then the hammer's next. It goes in there like so. And then make sure this little bar is behind that part on the hammer. Otherwise, I've gotten it together before and it's like this. And then you think you're done and you go to pull the hammer down and nothing. So make sure that's back there like that. Line up those three. And you can see the taper on the pin. It'll only go in one way. Line those three up. Press that through. And when you get them in, it'll be flush. Nice and even. And the hammer should be uh, on the trigger guard like that, to where you can push the hammer down, but the hammer or the trigger guard pulls the hammer down also. And next, you need to put this hammer spring assembly back together. And this window goes on the opposite side. That goes in that little ridge in the hammer. And then next, what I do is I compress that spring first. Keep, keep it simple and do one thing at a time. And here's where you need the wrench or any type of rounded blunt object. Use the pin to hold it in place. Push that down. And there's that. And you can see the roll pin is holding that in place. Next, get the trigger itself. And make sure that this little lip is above this housing, like that. If you do it like that, that's wrong. So, once you have it like that, and you can see that little hole has to line up with that one. And then use this again, and it's kind of a down and forward motion at the same time. Kind of diagonal. This is how I do it. You could just push the pin in through the other way if you wanted, but this works for me. Once you get the roll pin in there and it's holding everything together, have the pin ready. Press everything back down once more. And just use this pin to push the roll pin out. And there you go, in business. So that's reassembly, and that last step is what most people have problems with. It probably took me half an hour or an hour the first time I did it, finagling with that, but 
once you get it a couple times and find a good method like I did, it's not too bad. And there it is. All polished and ready to go. Nice.